Hey YouTubers, I'm Tim Townley. I have an exciting review for you that I have been waiting a long time for and I can't wait to share my findings. In another review, I did the z double distance slider and that one was really cool. If you wanna check that out, take a look at the link up above or in the description below. And now I have the Z-Pon Pons PT motorized pan head and it is super cool because it will make your shots even more dynamic. And best of all, you can repeat your shots. This is great for stop motion, time lapses. Uh, you could also do product photography or product videos. This is really cool and we're gonna to touch on some of those things today. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you a solution to a common problem that most users have with the Z-Pon Pons PT Panhead and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So let's go check it out. So you don't have to buy the whole thing together, you can buy it in pieces. So to start off with, if you wanted to buy it in pieces, you can start off with one motorized head first. And if that suits your needs, that's great. If it doesn't, and you wanna go a little crazy, and you wanna add in another one, plus a few accessories and arms and things like that that we're gonna talk about, just so that they all work together, then you could do that too. They're made of an aerial aluminum alloy and they weigh 850 grams for each head. They also come with a Bluetooth connection so that you can connect it to the app to control the movement. Now when you're using it in a vertical fashion, you can actually carry a payload of 4 kilograms, which is equal to about one standard sandbag. Just like this one. Now if you're using it in a horizontal fashion, you can actually do 50 kilograms for your payload, which is 10 of these sandbags. That's phenomenal. And that weight is calculated by the manufacturer when everything is balanced. In the real world, I don't know. So looking at the controls, we have two buttons here that function for your rotation. Then you have your power button that not only functions for your power, but also functions for your speed levels. Now you have three different speed levels. The top and the fastest being 13 degrees a second, and then the slowest being four degrees a second. The input power is five volts or two amps using the standard Sony MPF batteries, which aren't included, so you're gonna to have to buy those separately. Now the manufacturer has some specs on how long the batteries last, like the 550s, they last about three hours, the 770s last about six, and then if you go into the 970s, then you can get up to 12 hours. But that's in specs for what the manufacturer has, not necessarily in real world scenarios. I've used these during a six hour shoot and haven't had any issues. Now you'll also notice on the battery uh, compartment area here, you have a, a locking mechanism and that locking mechanism is great so that the batteries don't fall off while the mechanism is moving. Flipping the motor over to the side, you can uncover the two ports that house your camera trigger cable. So this cable here, sold separately, is used so that you can do time lapses or other special features that you can find in the app. The other port is a USB-C. Now this cable does come included and that's used to update your firmware and also you can use an external power source to power the device. So you can also find here that you have a signal emission zone screen thing. It looks like an LCD and you're expecting it to light up, but it doesn't light up. Lastly, if you look at the bottom, you can see that it has a 3 8 inch screw, which you can mount onto your favorite tripod. And on the top, it has this very unique kind of design where it has the quarter inch and the 3 8 built into one. And all you have to do is use your finger and you can turn and it pops out just like that. And you can use them separately as the quarter inch and the 3 8 inch. So very cool to have this unique design. So if you just wanna use a single head by itself, you first are going to need to attach a battery. 
Here's our battery. Pop that in place. And you'll notice that we have our power button over here. I'm going to press and hold until the lights come on. Green lights on, which means everything is good. So we're going to take our phone and we are going to control the app. Then it's going to detect that there is a head connected. You'll see that there's a green light there. We'll go back and then we're going to press done. So we are now able to use the controller to control our head, which is very cool. Uh, we can also control the speed at the top here if we want it to be faster. And back. Great. We can also use the waypoints. So if we reset our waypoints here, and we'll set this as waypoint one or A, and then we move it over here. That's good. And we'll do waypoint B. Good. And now we'll go back to waypoint A and we'll press play. And now it will just go to waypoint B. And if we want to, we can actually go back to A and we can loop at the bottom, press play. And it will just keep going back and forth. Now the next thing you can do is we can actually add something on here that makes it more interesting. So you have your camera, you have maybe a product. That's a good one. Here's our product today. We're going to put that on like that. This is going to be waypoint A. And then we're going to move to our next position, which is going to have him shooting towards the camera, say for instance, in this case. And we'll make that waypoint B. So now we go back to waypoint A. We have a play button and we just play and there we go. We have this on a, a control and we can actually loop it as well. Uh, we're going to keep it on loop and see what happens here. And it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because you press the loop during your play. So you have to wait until you stop before you can loop it. So we're going to stop. Now if we go back to waypoint A, now if we have our loop on, we press play. You'll notice that it'll go through the motions and then once it gets to its waypoint B, it'll move back into waypoint A and back and forth. And there we go. So the other thing that's really cool about product shots is that you can use the stop motion feature and the stop motion feature can be used to do a interactive 360 photo for product websites. Uh, actually Amazon I think does it as well. So taking a look at the screen here, we can go to the side panel and we can go over to our stop motion. So in the stop motion panel, we'll click that and we can set how many photos we want. So normally for a, uh, a product 360, you would use 24 photos. So we go 24 and we don't need to worry about the 24 frames per second. Um, and we're going to do our shutter time is going to be one second should be enough. As long as you have enough lighting and stuff like that, it should be good. So keep in mind, if you want to do a full 360, you have to set your waypoints ahead of time before going into the stop motion. And then you can start taking your shots one by one, just like this. And you can see how it moves and how easy that is. So you can see how useful this can be. And if you take off your product, you put a, uh, a camera head and then you put a camera on here, you can see that you can use this for multiple applications. So it's up to your imagination. So if you decided to go a little crazy like I did and buy two heads instead of one, <laughs> well, they do say two heads are better than one, don't they? Well, in this case, it's true. 
Well, you'll get a few accessories included too. You'll get the tilt arm, the Arca Swiss plate, the second head, of course, and then the arm that attaches your camera. But there's something special about this Arca Swiss plate in this arm. Listen to this. Oh, that sounds so good. I love that sound. Now that is the magnets connecting to it. So it makes it a little bit less fussy when you put it together. So let's get crazy and use the two heads instead of just the one. First, you take your first head. Now you can mount this onto a tripod if you want, or you can just have it by itself. I would recommend mounting it somewhere because as soon as you get the camera on there and other devices, it's gonna start being a little bit uh, unbalanced. So I'm just gonna show you how to put the thing together first, and then we'll show you how to put it onto a tripod. So after this, we're gonna take our tilt arm, insert it like that, lock it into place, make sure it's tight. Then you're gonna take your second piece, which, your, which has your motor and your camera mount. Make sure it's loose so it can go in and then tighten it back up. Now that you have the main part put together, it's a little unbalanced, so we're going to take the tripod and mount it to that. So I have my Peak Design Travel Tripod. Gonna take the main motor on the bottom and we are going to twist it on. And there we go. So after you got that on, you can put your batteries in. The next thing you wanna do is grab your camera and mount that. I'm just gonna move this over to the side here. Grabbing your camera, uh, you have to make sure that you're putting your camera on the correct way. If we do it this way, this part here will hit the, cam or hit the, the head. So we're gonna turn it the opposite way. Slide our camera on, listen to that magnet. There we go. Gonna try to put this in about the center point where it's the most balanced. Uh, it doesn't allow you to, to uh, see where it's balanced, but try to guess the best you can. It'll help the motor so that it doesn't have to work as hard. Once you have it in place, you're gonna lock it in. And let's take a look this way. And then you have your motors and your camera ready to go. You can go for your phone app and then you can start moving it. So once you're connected on the app, you can press the heads, ensure that you have the green indicator light on both of the heads, making sure that they're connected. You press done. And you can see in here that in the controls, you have a little bit more control. Now you have both the pan and the tilt. So let's take a look. We can tilt up, tilt down. We can move to the left and we can move to the right. Now before we move on to one of the other modes, one of the things we have to do is set two key points minimum. So we're gonna move it over here. And of course, we're not recording anything right now. We're just doing this as an example for you. We're gonna set that as our point A. And then we're gonna move it over and maybe up like this. And we're gonna set that as our point B. So then we're gonna press our waypoint A again just to set it back to our waypoint A position. And if we want, we can test it in this or we can go to one of our other modes. So I'm gonna test it really quick, pressing play, and you'll see that both heads move together. Now one thing that it doesn't do in this app, and that is allow you to control each head's speed differently. That's unfortunate, but hopefully that'll be something that they'll put in the future. Now looking back at our app here, 
you can see that we have our waypoint A and our waypoint B. And it also actually tells us here the play time, which is 7.3 seconds when it's in video mode. Now, if we switch over to one of our other modes here, we can see that we go into our intelligent time lapse. There's also our uh, stop motion. We have our 360 panorama. And then we have our matrix mode, which takes multiple shots to create one large shot. Now the camera trigger mode in this case is doing this using another um, device that you can buy separately. I don't have one here, but it actually allows you to compensate for change in your lighting as well. So for instance, if you're doing a day to night shot and you're doing a time lapse, that trigger will help you compensate for it. So we're gonna move over to our time lapse and show you a little bit how that works. We're gonna do this really briefly because this is something that you can play with once you get it. So taking a look at this, we can see that we can allow 224 photos. I'm just gonna do five photos just for the sake of this video. So before you can actually do this full function, you're gonna to need to use the trigger cable. You know the trigger cable that we use separately? Well, that's the one. Make sure if you're not using a Sony camera like this and you're using a Canon or uh, another type of camera that you have the correct cable for your camera. Make sure that your camera is in photo mode before you start. So I'm gonna take this off so that we can try this out. Then all you have to do is press the go button and wait for it to take those five shots. Pretty cool. Once the five shots are done, all you have to do is press the stop button and it will go back to the app. Okay, so you wanna go a little bit more crazy and you have the slider available to you? Well, let's try that out. So if you're putting them together for the first time, you'll notice that uh, you have a plate that comes with the full system. This plate is really useful for raising up the pan heads so that it's not touching and grinding against things. So you're gonna put that on first. Once that's on, you can take your whole system. The other thing that's good about that plate actually is that it has the 3 8 inch uh, adapter so you don't have to put an adapter on yourself. So then all you do, turn on your Zipon slider. Good. Move that over to the side so you can see me too. Once everything's all connected and ready to go, you'll see on the app that everything is connected, has the colors indicating on the rail slider and the heads. Press done, and you'll see that the controls, again, are a little different than last time. We have our pan and tilt on the left, and then on the right, we have our slider that moves it back and forth. And just like before, we can set our waypoints for A, B, and so on. It doesn't have to be only two points. It could be multiple points up to F. So let's try that. So let's uh, face our camera this way and maybe we'll go up. That'll be our point A. And then we're gonna move it over this way and down. And we're gonna slide over this way and we are gonna make that our point B. Now I'm gonna also turn up the speed to 100%. We're gonna go back over to our point A so that we can get to our starting point, which in this case doesn't really make any sense. It's just looking at the ceiling, but for an example, this'll work. Then we press play and there we go. Don't forget that before you press play on here, this does not action the record button. So make sure you press record on your camera before doing this. So some of my final thoughts on this, 
Oh, just wait, there's one Ooh. thing I forgot to tell you. At the beginning of the video, I told you I had a solution to one of the problems that most users have. So let's take a look at that right now. So it doesn't come with a case. I decided to do my own case. As you can see here, it fits everything. We have the three batteries. We have our tilt arm, our two motors, our plate, and I even found room to put our slider in. Well, that was cool, wasn't it? Aren't you glad I showed you that? Because most people don't show you what their option is. Instead of carting it around in the cardboard box, you can buy your own case and set it up just like that. Now, my final thoughts on this, is it a good slider and a good pan and tilt head? Absolutely. The pan and tilt head system, along with the slider, are super dynamic and they work great together. Now, if you want to use it just as individual pieces, you can do that. It's very modular and it is an excellent piece of gear that's super strong and it will last you a long time. I have had zero issues with it. So I give it two thumbs up. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Now, if you're interested in the pan and tilt by Zipon, well, there's a link in the description. And if you're interested in any of the other gear that I've shown in this video, there's also a link in the description for you and for your convenience. It really helps out the channel by you clicking those links and it doesn't cost you any extra. And don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and why not hit that bell icon too. Ding ding. And we'll see you next time. One head is 850 grams and I keep looking down. Vertically, four kilogram payload. No, do, 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 cut.